Thank you very much for reviewing my book. I know it took a bit to get to you, but uh, I was really excited. I was uh, I was following all of your um, all of the uh, reviews and things you were doing, especially for um, happens in Nova Scotia. What is that? The um, um, by the sea, the Sherry Fitch's uh, Revenge. Yeah. So you were you were um, interviewing all of those authors, and yeah, that was very cool. Yeah. So uh, thank you for watching those and. Uh Hi guys, welcome back to Wild Willies Book Reviews. Today I'm interviewing author Lana Button and um, yeah, she just want to introduce yourself and say hello. Yeah, hi. Hi Wild Willie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a huge fan and uh, I, uh, I was born and raised in St. Stephen, New Brunswick. I'm a proud maritime girl, so I'm thrilled to be on your show. Thank you for uh, coming. So, as you guys have seen on my channel, I have um, reviewed this book, Raja's Rule, on my channel. And if you guys haven't seen that, make sure to go check that out. But that is just one of the uh, few books that she has written, and I plan on reviewing more in the future. Um, but yeah, how did you get started on um, writing? How, you know what, I always, I, I love to do um, presentations in schools and I always tell students that I, I didn't think I was going to grow up to be a writer. I was pretty sure I was going to grow up to be a movie star. I practiced being a movie star a lot in my bedroom and um, I always had a big imagination. I've always been very creative. Um, I went off to study acting and I was an actor for a while. Um, and But the other thing that I've always loved is working with kids and being around kids and and uh, helping kids. And I missed that when I was acting. And so I went back and studied early childhood education because I love working with younger children. And that's when I discovered really um, the magic of picture books. And I wanted to write picture books. And picture books allowed me to... Um, because picture books are really performed, right? Like you want it, you have an audience. They're meant to be read out loud. They're meant to be kind of performed. So I loved all of the aspects of writing picture books. So that's kind of how it happened. When you were um, growing up, did you, were you ever reading a lot or were you always, like you said, um, focusing on acting and stuff like that? I, I loved books. I read a lot. I didn't have a ton of books when I was a kid, but the books that I had, I read over and over and over again. My mom had this Trixie Belden series, which was like a mystery series. She was like just a little bit tougher and cooler than Nancy Drew, I think. And, um, and I had a library card. And so I would go to the library and I would get books out of the public library. I would get books out of my school library. And when I found a favorite book, I would read it over and over and over again. So did you find your inspiration for writing came from Loving Kids or maybe from the books that you read as a child or even books that you were reading when you started writing? That's a really good question. Um, I think that I've always loved working with kids and I've always wanted to, I've always gravitated towards being around kids. And when I went to school to study about early childhood education, I had an amazing teacher. Um, her name is Leslie Allen and uh, she lives in New Brunswick still. And she introduced all these great picture books that, you know, picture books can be very almost therapeutic. Like they're, they're educational, they're inspirational, and they're also very helpful. Like you can talk about some pretty serious topics in kind of a safe way with picture books. So I think that through my love of young children and my um, desire to kind of perform and create characters, that was kind of the back door to wanting to write for kids. Did you find when you were growing up that you had like a, maybe a specific teacher that um, encouraged you to get into writing or do you think that you just um, found that love on your own? That's a good question. Um, I had some wonderful teachers. I had teachers who read out loud to me. Um, I had a teacher 
who really, because I was, I really was sure I was going to perform. I was really sure that I was going to act. I had great teachers who inspired me that way. And, um, when I went to school to study early childhood education, I had a great teacher. And again, her reading, I mean, I was, I was in my twenties, but she was reading like chicka chicka boom boom. And like these great picture books that I hadn't heard before. And I realized what a great avenue that was to inspire and help kids. And because I love to create characters and make things up, like it just seemed like the best, the best fit for me. So when you started off um, writing, was there a certain type of book that you wanted to write or did you kind of just um, let your love of like children sort of like make the book for you? Yeah, I have because now I have, I'm, I'm very lucky to kind of have because I've had a few books and, I, and I'm part of this group called Canscape so I've met a lot of authors. And so I have friends who write in lots of different genres, but for me, I've always liked to work with young children and I want to write for them. I want to write for the audience that I really feel most comfortable with. Like some people say, oh, you know, you work in kindergarten. Do you ever want to teach grade eight? Do you ever want to teach? Like, no, I really, I want to stay in that, in that, that's the age that I've studied and and because picture books are kind of a performance, I've always really gravitated towards the picture book. I am trying to write a middle grade right now in nonfiction, which is kind of out of my genre. But, you know, I'm, I'm like nine books in now. And um, so I, I, am, I am trying to branch out a bit. But, you know, when I go to write a story it just comes out as a picture book. Like it, it just, it just comes out in kind of that, that form. So, you know, that's, that's, that's what I've been doing so far. So I was uh, reading about you and I um, learned that you performed in Montreal and Vancouver, Vancouver. And you were mentioning how like your love of acting kind of helped you with picture books. Do you mm -hmm. find that's why you like to go into schools and like read to kids because you always like wanted to kind of act and kind of reading is also acting at the same time when it's a picture book, especially. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny because I love presenting because sometimes I'm in a gym, right? And they've got like half the school and I'm performing, like really it is, it's a, it's a half an hour where I'm trying to keep everybody's attention and I'm trying to perform my stories. And now that we're on Zoom, because I was, a, I was, I worked in TV and I worked in film and I worked in theater. So when you're performing, when you're presenting live, it's like, it's like theater, but when you're presenting on Zoom, it's like TV, like it's tight, like it's, so it's, I, I kind of go back to the other part of my acting, but I really miss the, like when you perform in theater, you see the audience, like you see the reaction. And that's the case when you present live in schools. Like I can see the kids and I can see if they're interested and I can see if they're laughing in the right spots. I can see if I'm kind of losing them. So I need to like do something else. So I really, really miss that part um, when I'm not presenting live. But yeah, I absolutely, that's a huge part of what I want to do is to also connect with kids and present. So do you have any maybe um, tips or words of encouragement to kids or even anybody really that's trying to um, create a book in general? You know, I started out with a love for kids and a desire to create something. And it took me a really, really long time to keep going. And I think that it was part of my acting background that there's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of, you know, you don't get the part, you don't get the part, you don't get the part. So when I tried to write and I would get rejection now in the mail, <laughs> now they're mailing it to me. And it's, it's, you have to just keep going. And I would just tell myself that no doesn't mean no forever. It means no for right now and keep trying. And 
it took me years and years and years to go from uh, dear author, no thank you, to dear Lana, this is cute, but it's not what we need right now, to dear Lana, like maybe if you'll just change all this. And so it took me six years to get my first book published. So, and now it's a book and I can read it to kids. And I've had a lot of feedback from kids that have said, your book helped me. And so it was so worth it. So you just have to, you know, no doesn't mean no forever. It means no for now and keep trying. Do you have a book that you wrote that you think was your favorite to create or do you enjoy creating them all? Um, I, you know, I love, I'm very proud of all my books. And you know what? The other thing I love about picture books is it's such a team project. Like, it's like I come to the project with the words, but it's like, I have to sell the editor. Like, look, you can just imagine it'll look like this and then we'll turn the page and, and then it'll look like this. And they have to be like, yeah. And then we'll hire an illustrator. And then, you know, and we all work together. So it's such a team project that I'm super proud of all my books. My first book is, you know, it's about a very quiet girl who gets ignored and you know, nobody really notices that all through the day, she's pretty unhappy because no one can hear her until she finds a way to speak up. And I just, I wanted so badly for this book to be published. And again, it took me six years, six years um, to get a pub, to get it published. So that book is always going to have a little extra spot in my heart. Did you ever think when you were, like, when you started off writing before you had any books, did you ever think that you, like, not could, but that you would be an author when you were before? You know what? I think it's really important that if you really want something, you have to see it. Even if you, even if you don't believe it, you have to say it. You have to see it and you have to say it. And I, I have three daughters and I would, I've told them that so many times. If you really want something, you have to see it and you have to say it. And so I would, even when I've had a lot of rejection, and you know what? I just got a rejection this week. I've written this story and I really, really like it. And I was so hoping my editor would like it. And she was like, nah, sorry, it's not for us. And so I just have to brush it off and say, okay, you know what? I need to try again. I need to try somebody else. I need to keep going. It's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to keep going, but I think it's important to take a minute, um, acknowledge that you're disappointed and then, and then try again. So, um, I dreamed of it and I imagined it and I, I'm super happy that, 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 that I've got some books now. I think all the fans of your writing want to know, do you have any more books coming out in the future of really any uh, type of book? Yes, I do. I do. I have some, I have a couple, you know, picture books take a really long time to get to be a book. So I have a book coming in June. It's the third book in the animal series. Um, it's called Tara's Not Talking. And it's about how Kitty has come to school. Her friends are all there and there's a new kid and she's not talking at all. So everyone's kind of like, oh, she probably wants to play alone. Oh, she wants. But Kitty's really figuring out how to communicate with her when she can't talk to her. Um, I have a board book coming out with Orca Books coming in 2023. I have a book, um, I have this book, The Cow Said Boo, which is just a fun, silly story. And it's going to be a board book in 2022. And then I have a book with Orca, or no, with um, Tundra, and it's called My Grammy's House. And that's, yeah, I'm just, I just got an email that um, they're trying to decide who the illustrator will be for that book. So so yeah, and, yeah, a, and a, couple, a couple that I have my fingers crossed. <laughs> Do you have anything to say to your fans or anybody watching this video in particular? 
Well, like I said, Wild Willie, I'm thrilled to be on your show because I am a, I'm a huge fan and this has been such a pleasure and I can't wait to get back to the Maritimes and I hope to visit some schools in person and read my books out loud. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's been a real pleasure to spend some time with you. Yeah. Thank you for coming and uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Thanks. Have a good night. You too.